What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the channel. We're here on the D-Day Buddy Build. This is episode number eight, and today, guys, we're going to be pushing forward on the 190, really trying to get as much done as we can so that we can move on next episode with hopefully some paint and some primer. Now, last episode, I went ahead and put the fuselage onto the wings. We closed up those gun bays. We built the cowling. We installed our own makeshift exhaust pipes. We're looking pretty decent today to go ahead and mount up that cowling, and we should be ready to go ahead and figure out the propeller. Now, like I mentioned, we're not going to be building the engine. I don't see any reason to do that. We're going to leave the engine out, but we do have to come up with a way to install the propeller and the front cooling fan. That's all one unit. That's going to be kind of the biggest hurdle we have here on this episode. Also, we need to go ahead and make sure that all the panel lines are nicely secured and that we don't have any large gaps. We do have to repair some seams in certain areas, and we have a lot of kind of overflow of some glue around the front leading edges. So we need to use some jeweler files, use some sandpaper, get it ready to go, because we also have to go ahead and fill in the wing root area right around those gun bays. Those have to be kind of filled up. As you can see, there's a big panel line seam here on the one right wing and on the left side of the fuselage. So that has to be covered up. But before that, let's cue that time lapse and let's get on that propeller, clean it up and get that ready for installation. All right, everybody, so we have the propeller drive shaft and that front cooling fan installed together, and we're ready to go ahead and figure out how to get this thing installed. My first primary idea here, guys, is to take some sprue, go ahead and cut off the end, glue that together, and have that act as a very long propeller shaft. That way I can glue it to the back of the firewall, and we should be good to go. So this is actually what I'm going to be trying to do first, and if it works, we're good. We'll push on. If it doesn't work, we'll reassess it and go back to the drawing board. First thing, we're going to have to just cut this and smooth it out so that we have a nice clean edge to go ahead and glue up to that firewall, and also a nice clean edge to glue onto the back of the existing propeller shaft. And let's just go ahead and test fit this and kind of figure out how it sits inside. Yeah, so that's going to work nicely, I think. We're going to glue that together, and I want to say that we should be fine, but again, we won't know until we actually try it. So let's go ahead and glue this down to the back of the existing propeller shaft. Then we'll let that dry. Once it's dry, we'll come on back and we'll try to fit it inside. I'm pretty sure we should be able to get it done. But again, I want to make sure it's nice and dry before I go ahead and try to wedge it into the front cowling. Because the front cowling is super tight here, guys. So let's go ahead and fit this propeller shaft down inside that opening. Also why I didn't install the front cover for the machine guns. And we'll just have to kind of bend it around a little bit. Hopefully it should kind of slip in there. All right, there we go. And I'm going to try to line it up as even in the middle as I can. Right about there should be decent. And see what I mean there? It sits right behind that front cowling. We don't have to worry about the engine. Most of it will be blacked off, so we won't actually see it. And that actually should work pretty decently. So let's go ahead and glue it down, though, so it doesn't go anywhere. I think that's a pretty good position. A little bit of extra thin right there on the back by the firewall. And I think that should be perfect. So that is nicely glued right there on the back of the firewall. I think actually that's going to work. Let's go ahead and test fit that propeller. Go ahead and position that and just see how it looks. Make sure there's enough distance between the cowling and the propeller blades. Make sure they're not rubbing. And I want to say that looks about right. Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and put this aside for right now. We'll let it dry, then come back a little bit later after this is dried, and we're going to start filling up some seam lines because we have a lot of those we have to go ahead and take care of. So we'll be right back. All right, so our propeller shaft is nice and tacked in there. It's good. It's drying. I think we are fine with that. I want to go ahead and take my jeweler files, cue up a time lapse, and we're going to clean up all of the seams. 
Then I'm going to run some sandpaper over the different areas, like the wing roots, the leading edges, the trailing edges. And we'll get it all ready because then I want to come back and I want to try to fill all those areas with some filler. I have some Mr. Surfacer that I really like to use. So let's queue up that time lapse, guys, and get this thing one step closer to being finished. Looking pretty decent, guys. We've got all of the lines nicely sanded out and all of the edges filed down. So everything is really, really smooth right now. But we do have to figure out what to do with this giant panel seam here where the gun bay cover touches the wing. Let's go ahead and fix up here on this one little seam. So I'm going to fill that with some super glue. And then I'm going to come back once that super glue is all tacked up. I'm going to spread out some Mr. Surfacer. Probably use about 1200 Mr. Surfacer grit. And then I'll be covering that over and then clearing it with a little bit of acetone, in this case, some fingernail polish remover. That should help to kind of smooth everything out and to get all the Mr. Surfacer down into the cracks. So cue up that time lapse. Let's get it done. And we are back, everybody. We have the Mr. Surfacer all nicely smoothed out. We do need to do a little bit of sanding, but I'll do that off camera. It's no big deal. We're going to shift over now while everything kind of sets up. We're going to move to the landing gears. Now, the landing gears on the Fock Wolf are kind of cool. They're really beefy looking landing gears, kind of cant inwards. It's a little bit of different stance, but it looks aggressive. So the first thing that we need to go ahead and do is clean up the landing gears. A lot of parts here on this kit are really, really finely molded, and they fit beautifully. But... We do have some seam lines here and there. We do have some injection molds. Every once in a while, we'll find something like that. So it's best to just kind of check over the parts, clean them up as best you can. Even though these are Edward parts, there's still a little bit of cleanup that we do need to do. Let's go ahead and test fit this landing gear up into the wing and see how that works. There's kind of an odd connection point here. Most of the time when I've built kits, say like Hasegawa or Tamiya, there is a pin that fits down into the bottom of the wing. And then you can just go ahead and glue in the supports and move on from there. With this one, though, there isn't really a standard 
single pin. There's actually two different locating tabs here that you need to go ahead and align to make sure that everything sits nicely. One is on the very back of the landing gear and one is on the very bottom, but it's not really a full on pin. It's more of just like this little dimple. It doesn't seem to be a lot of stability. Now, like I said, there's not a lot of meat kind of holding these together. There's not a lot of surface area either to go ahead and glue them down. So I'm a little bit confused as to why it was designed like this. Maybe it's more accurate, I don't know. But honestly, it's going to probably be fine once I start getting the other actuators installed. There's actually one part here we need to install that should help us also with the angle. Because remember, the landing gears for the Focke-Wulf are canted inward. There's a certain degree that they're canted inward. So I think if I go ahead and attach this actuator, it should force the landing gears to sit at the proper angle. At least that's what I'm hoping. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of glue here. And we're just going to test fit this and glue this in. And once this is set up, we're going to be able to kind of shift it around and attach it to the back of the landing gear. Now, the little pins here on the back of the landing gear to go ahead and attach these parts are very, very tiny. So just a little bit of glue here on that actuator base. I think we are pretty decent. Let that sit, make sure that it's canted inward correctly, make sure that it's not rotated too far out. And I think we're ready to go ahead and do the next one. So I'll throw that landing gear in and then we'll hopefully be ready to move on to the next section. All right, let's go ahead and take this little actuator here. We're gonna clean it off and you can see that it's actually very tiny. It's gonna go here in the back of the landing gear bay. Once it's glued down there, then it's gonna go up against the back of the landing gear itself. This should all fit together nicely. So let's take a little bit of glue, drop a little bit right on the end here. And we're gonna take our tweezers and we're just going to attach this actuator on the back against that back wall first. Then we'll kind of shift it up and we'll position it to the back of the landing gear. And then I think we'll be good to go. These parts are very tiny. So I want to make sure that they line up correctly and everything fits. So press it in a little bit with the tweezers. Make sure to arc it up slightly. And it's going to go right about there. Yeah, that should actually work very, very nicely. A little bit of glue on that. We'll hold it together for a few seconds and then it should set up nicely. So a little bit of Tamiya and we'll move on from there. Now, the last couple of steps I want to go ahead and do today before I call it quits is I want to install the rear ailerons and I want to install the rudder. Once those are installed, we'll have the majority of parts already on the Focke Wolf. We'll be ready to go ahead and finish up the final last little bits and pieces here and there, sand everything down, and then we can go ahead and come back next episode. And I'm hoping we can install the canopy, mask all that off, and then we can start priming this thing and get it ready for paint. Like I said, we don't have a lot of time before this has to be finished. Now the rear tail also has a little bit of an injection seam right down the middle of the rudder. That's okay though, because you're really not gonna see it, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean it off just a little bit though, so it doesn't interfere with how it attaches to the back of the tail. Then this should just fit right in and just press up against the back. Let's go ahead and just put a little bit of glue on that. And we'll press this right in there. And I think guys, we are done for today. So thank you so much for joining us here on episode eight of the D-Day Buddy Build. We really have to get the let out guys. So I'm gonna push forward next episode to try to get a lot of stuff done. But until then, go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. And we'll see you back here on the next episode of the D-Day Buddy Build on Ben Builds. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.